Oh, that was perfect timing. As soon as we come back from that little intro, we get the game underway. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be match number one between TSM EVO and Absolute Legends North America. TSM EVO going to be on the blue side, AL going to be on the purple side. And the bands have gone underway. Looks like Red will actually ban them pretty, pretty quickly here. We see a Janna and Alistar band coming out from TSM EVO, whereas AL has decided to ban out Shen and Kennen. Theme of ninjas, always a very good theme to ban out for the team. And then the last ban from TSM EVO is going to be Nocturne. So we're going to have to see here. I guess they really don't want Alistar or Nocturne. Both can be junglers. Alistar and Jana can both be support characters. A little bit of the overlapping in the bands here. And then, of course, the ever-hated Urgot band coming out from ALNA. This is something that's very interesting because TSM EVO is doing something very similar to what their uh, sort of their co-team, just Team Solo Mid, likes to do. One of the things that TSM likes to do all the time is they will ban out Alistar, they will ban out either Janna or Soraka, and then they will pick whichever one they do not ban out of the pool, and they do that whenever they have first pick. So TSM EVO has done basically the exact same thing. Ban out Alistar, ban Janna, and then use their first pick on Soraka because, it, at least as far as TSM goes, they clearly feel that Janna and Soraka Raka are the two strongest supports right now, and that may have rubbed off on TSM EVO as well, because it looks like they're following a very similar strategy here. As far as the other bands, these are very standard bands all over the place. Nobody likes to deal with Shen, nobody likes to deal with Urgot, and Kennen and Nocturne are also just seen as sort of very, very strong champions. Kennen in particular, because he goes into that double ability power champion uh, lineup where he can be in either top or he can be in mid. So it looks like we have the next couple of picks coming out here, and I'll turn it back over to Tom. Yep, we have a Tarek pick locked in for ALJ pack. And I know JPEG is a support player for their team, and he absolutely loves playing his Tarek. I think every single tournament match I've seen with him playing, it's been on Tarek. So it's not really a surprise to see that, although it's going to be interesting to see how he pairs the Tarek with an AD. Tarek, of course, has the armor coming up from his Shatter, and then he has Dazzle, which is a hard CC in that stun, in addition to his little mini heal, too, which will heal himself, as well as the a target that he heals. So we're going to see, are they going to be aggressive with that pick, or maybe a little bit more defensive? But there's also a Maokai pickup, and then shooting back over to TSM Eva, they pick right away. It looks like they're going to be going for an Ezreal and Nautilus, picking up their AD and their jungler. Yeah, those picks, all the picks for our TSM Evo come out really fast. So it looks like both the bands and the picks, it looks like they knew exactly what they wanted to get and that they've gotten that thus far. Ezreal Soraka is a very strong lane in bottom just because Soraka synergizes very well with Ezreal. It allows Ezreal to sit back and just poke and use his Mystic Shot again and again and again. Or his Essence Flux, you can also max his Essence Flux first, and that's another build that's come into more popularity. Nautilus, of course, a very popular jungler right now. A lot of people saying that he is probably too strong of a jungler. We might be seeing some more nerfs for him coming in, but just has so much crowd control in his total package. And Absolute Legends North America has now locked in some of their picks as well after sort of trolling us with an Eve pick for a while there. They've locked in Anivia and locked in Graves. Yes, indeed. It is going to be an Anivia in the middle lane, which we've seen a lot of different players do a really, really nasty things with Anivia. Of course, the one I'm mainly thinking of is Froggen from CLG EU. Don't necessarily know if AL is going to be as practiced with Froggen on Anivia, but Anivia is, of course, one of those champions that could do a lot of things. Besides dealing a lot of damage, she has a stun in her Frostbite. In addition to that, she's going to be able to really defend towers if a split push situation happens. Anivia laying down that ultimate in front of a tower is really kind of like I dare you to cross this line without taking way too much damage damage for it. And it's going to be very, very good deterrent if TSM EVO gets into a situation where they're going to be split pushing lanes. Interesting enough that they picked her up in the middle of the picks when no one else on EVO really looks to be in a split push position, especially with the Shen being banned out there from ALNA. But perhaps they just want to play a little bit more defensive with their pick. But then again, Anivia also has a lot of things she can do with setting people up for ganks, especially with that wall she can lay down. Yeah, one of the things about Anivia is really ever since the early days of competitive play in League of Legends, I'm thinking all the way back to World Cyber Games 2010 <laughs> when CLG was playing her, Anivia has always been just much better in tournament play than in solo queue. She's rarely played in solo queue, but she just becomes such a monster in tournament play, mostly due to the fact that she's able to uh, knock down any pushes as long as she has blue buffs. She can just stall out pushes forever under your own towers. And then, of course, her wall, which is just amazing in McLaren fashion, just the ability to <laughs> completely wall off jungle pass and that sort of thing. Anyway, we do have more picks coming out here. TSM EVO going with the double AP team comp. It looks like they're going to have Ari in mid and Vladimir in top. So again, that's something that uh, the TSM generally likes to play, and TSM EVO is favoring sort of a similar style here, although TSM usually doesn't play Ezreal as much. But So double AP team comp is going to be almost certainly Vlad in top lane, Ari in middle lane. And then the last pick, we actually have Wukong coming out. He's a little bit of a wild card and a champion we don't see that much. I kind of like the Wukong pickup. 
the thing is, Vladimir is most likely going to be in the top lane, Winds of Death putting him into top lane there. One thing that Vladimir does suffer from is he has a very weak early game, and that's the way he's designed. Late stages of the game, he can lay down a Hemo Plague, and even if he's not dealing as much damage himself, he could really turn around a team fight, so it really makes him viable into like the mid to late stages of the game. But to make up for that, he has to have a weakness somewhere, and that is going to be in his early game. If Kigomi Please is going to be taking Wukong into the top lane, he does have an armor uh, armor shred on the on the Q as soon as he hits with it. In addition to that, he's going to be able to run in there with his Nimbus Strike, that E, and deal a lot of damage to Vladimir, and perhaps force a pool. This is also going to pair extremely well with Maokai coming from the jungle with those ganks. If he goes in there with his Twisted Advance and is already a pool burned from Vladimir, that is going to be almost certainly a death in the top lane for him. Vladimir definitely will be behind in that, that lane early on, which is probably why Wings of Death took Summoner Heal. Summoner Heal just tends to work very well with Vlad, though, just in general, because you can get very low, you can heal bait people, it looks like you're about to die, and then it's like, aha, I have Summoner Heal, I'm not going to die. And then you think you're going to kill him again, it's like, no, I have Pool, I'm again not going to die, and I'm going to keep transfusing you the whole time. I, I, I am a little bit concerned, though, for Kikomi, please. The one thing with that matchup is Wukong is going to do well early on, but the longer the match goes on, Vlad's innate sustain is really going to make it difficult for Wukong because he doesn't have any innate sustain. He's going to have to get either some Durin's Blades or a Vampiric Scepter. But the longer that lane goes on, the harder it's going to be for Wukong. Wukong does actually offer a decent amount to the team. His ult is pretty nice. It, it pairs fairly well with Maokai's ultimate, the knockup that can hit everybody on the team fight. But I'm just worried about what's going to happen for Absolute Legends around like the level 9, the level 12 mark when Vlad is just healing himself for 100 with every single Q on like a 3 second cooldown and Wukong is just going to have a lot of trouble sustaining himself in that top lane. So it, it's kind of an interesting pick. I, I just would have thought something with a little bit more sustain. Maybe someone like Aurelia who has sort of natural innate sustain up there. I mean there's a couple of different ways they could play this and again it, this could go extremely well for Absolute Legends. They could easily get ahead early on and just dominate that lane. But it is a little bit of an interesting pick. Anyway, as far as other lanes go, we just want to mention where we have elsewhere. We do have Ari against Anivia in middle lane. Ari is, of course, more of an assassin type champion. If she snowballs out in front, it's going to be very painful for Anivia. Meanwhile, if Anivia is just able to get her blue buffs at, after level 6, she can pretty much farm indefinitely. So much of that matchup will depend not, not even so much on the middle laners, but on the junglers as to whether Anivia can be denied her blue buff. If Anivia is taking her blues, then she's incredibly strong. But if the enemy team is going in and stealing them, then Anivia becomes a very weak champion because she just runs out of mana extremely quickly, even if she does go for the tier build or whatever, but she still will run out very quickly if she can't get her blues. So again, it's going to have a lot to do with not just the middle laners, but with how the whole rest of the team is playing as well, and in particular what they're doing as far as jungling. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. very, very interesting to see. Nautilus is not normally known as a counter juggling champion, but he does have so much crowd control that once that sec uh, second blue buff is going to be spawning in the jungle around like the level 6 or 7 mark, if he and Ari and even maybe uh, Ezreal from the bottom lane with a lot of mobility are going to go and contest that blue buff for Anivia, it could be a very, very painful thing for Absolute Legends. If Anivia gets denied that blue buff and Ari actually has access to her own, if not the opponent's blue buff, there's going to be just a not a lane that Anivia wants to stay in. The thing is, Ari, as you said, a very assassin type champion. If she snowballs ahead, it's going to be a very difficult time, but she also has so much mobility on her, especially because of her ultimate, and Anivia really wants to kind of concentrate people into one space so she can really land a full combo of her spells to deal maximum damage. So if Ari's going to get that blue buff and Anivia's not going to have it, and Ari's going to be a little bit ahead of Anivia, I think is going to be in it for a world of pain out of the middle lane. So, Tom, just two quick things before we get started. Maokai is actually a really nice jungler pick against Ari because of the way his initiation works. It will follow uh, Ari if she tries to dash away with her ultimates. That mm -hmm. actually works pretty well for Absolute Legends. And then secondly, just an, a quick word about that bottom lane. Ezreal Soraka has more poke and has more sustain. Graves Tarek has more burst damage. That's really what we're looking at. One side that's more interested in sort of staying at a distance and poking away. The other side, Absolute Legends with Grave Tarek is more interested in sort of getting up into the face of Ezreal and uh, unlocking loading Graves' whole burst combo. So that's sort of the matchup down there. Mm -hmm. and it's going to be very interesting to see if Tarek and uh, Graves can be very aggressive on this Ezreal Soraka composition. Soraka, of course, is known as the healing definition of sustained support, whereas Ezreal is known for his 9 million ways to escape from a gang. So if Tarek and Graves are going to try to be aggressive on the bottom lane, I don't think it's going to work out to, uh, for them as well, unless they can get Soraka to blow her heal, because Soraka's heal at level 1 does have a 20 second cooldown, and I believe it only scales up to the 17 or 16 second cooldown at, towards the maximum levels. 
cooldowns. So if they can abuse those timers on Soraka's cooldown, they might be able to have a little bit of a better chance at maybe killing her in the bottom lane, but I don't really think it's going to work out if they're trying to snowball against Ezreal because he just has way too many escapes. That's right. It's going to be difficult to catch Ezreal. He can always immediately arcane shift away if Tarek tries to stun him. So they're probably going to need some jungler help if they're going to try to pick up a kill in that lane. Soraka is quite weak. She really does need a couple levels. She needs to get about to level 5 and 3 points in her heal in order for it to really start uh, scaling up. So she actually is rather weak at the start of the game. Anyway, we are underway with both teams now. We are in the game. Neither one of these teams has an especially great level 1 team fight. They're both kind of... I guess average. There are a couple skills that are decent, but nothing really groundbreaking. We don't have a Blitz or an Alistar in this game, so we will see if these teams decide to teamfight. I don't see a, a huge obvious advantage for either side. Maybe slightly Absolute Legends because they do have Tarek stun and Anivia stun, but it's not really a, a game-defining edge for either one of these teams in the level 1 fight. No, but taking a quick look at some of the uh, builds that they have, everybody's actually taking pretty much a mirror matchup build, except for Vladimir going to the top lane with the cloth armor to go against that physical damage of Wukong. I'm actually very interested in the Maokai pickup here, as he does start with 15 ability power, which means his runes and masteries are a little bit more offensive than what we're used to seeing on perhaps a 0-21-9 kind of style Maokai. We actually do have 52 armor on Vladimir, so that is the anti-Wukong uh, rune page and mastery page there, along with that cloth armor, so that's a very interesting start. We, we do see Absolute Legends invading here at the red buff of TSM Evo, but it does look like they've been spotted, and it looked like uh, Aphromoo and Natwin had no trouble getting out of that. No, perhaps looks like they might just be in trying to see which buff Nautilus is going to start at first. Of course, we did see in MLG Anaheim's Hotshot GG on Nautilus love starting at that red buff, but instead of going for the blue buff, which Nautilus usually uses to go on his jungle path just a little bit quicker. But they are going to notice that no one is over at the red buff. They're not going to really contest anything. Just make sure that Maokai can go back and safely take his own blue. Meanwhile, Unstoppable in the jungle is going to go back and take his own blue buff. So nothing too, too much at the level one. Just a little poke and prod to see what everybody's up to, but pretty much an average start for both teams at the beginning of the game. That's right. Much sound and fury signifying nothing in the t level one team fight right there. Uh, both both junglers just doing a very standard wolves into blue buff start, which is extremely typical for both sides. Nautilus seems to have gotten a slightly better leash, and he's a little bit ahead, but not much of a difference there. One thing I will point out, just for anyone that had a ch maybe had a chance to see this, Unstoppable, He, if you'll notice, he actually, uh, as standard on jungle Nautilus, he did start with his W, but he actually started his W, he popped his W about three or four seconds before he started doing the wolves. That's so that that skill would come off of cooldown in time to use it on blue buff. So just a little tip there for anyone who's interested in trying out jungle nautilus themselves and we did see here that uh al josh did not use his smite on the blue buff got a very very good leash so he is actually going to go straight for his red buff we could see a potential early gank from maokai something that we don't normally see too much is an early ganking maokai if we see if he hits level three off of this if he's going to pick up the twisted advance and he does and he's going to be swinging back around raids walking right over a ward though so even if he is going for a gank early on ari i don't think it's going to be too too successful solo no, it doesn't look like it. The ping immediately came out, and if you notice, Salsi immediately went to the right side of the lane because he knew that Maokai was in the area. And again, just shows how these teams really are on top of what they're doing. So that gank's not going to be particularly successful. Elsewhere on the map, there was some action in bottom lane. Uh, TSM Evo took a little bit more damage, but again, they have Soraka, so they don't care if they take a little bit more damage. So uh, it, right there, they're sort of back to that uh, sustain fest. And uh, I mean, it's possible that a kill might come out, but uh, right there, uh, the, the stun from JPAC came out on Aphromoo, and he immediately arcane shifted away, and then Nat Nguyen just going to try to heal him back up. So uh, again, we'll see that, like we said, it's the contrast between burst damage and sustain right there. So we'll try to keep an eye on that lane and see if any major plays come out of it. Yeah, the one thing is Graze has already blown through two health potions trying to get aggressive on that Ezreal Soraka combo, and Aphromoo has just used his first health potion of the game. So that is a little bit more in favor of the sustain lane for Soraka. They were just going to have to keep an eye on that, like you said, to see how it does unfold. And now Vladimir on the top lane doing what we saw last game from... We have a gank in mid, Tom. Uh, ooh, we do, actually. It seems that Nautilus is going to be coming in, getting a stun down onto Al Naya with that uh, staggering blow. Naya is going to flash away, but he's actually going to be going into egg form here. Josh is going to pop out of the jungle, see if he can actually save Anivia. That is not going to happen there. Unstoppable just too, too tanky. Not going to be going down. And Salsi will pick up first blood over there on Anivia. Josh gets extremely, extremely low. Does not want to lose those double buffs and will actually get out of there with his life. But still, first blood for TSM Evo picked up there in that game. 
Yeah, that's our first big play of the game right there. Just a, a standard Nautilus gank, unstoppable, came around. He was not spotted. He was able to get into a position behind Naya's Anivia. They are able to kill, not not just get the kill on Anivia, but also take out her egg as well. So that will be down for the next five minutes. So we'll be, we'll, uh, dying through egg is never something you want to see early on in the laning phase with Anivia. They also did pop the flash on uh, Absolute Legends Josh as well. So that will make his ganks that much weaker for the next three to four minutes as well. So a really big play there from TSM uh, Evo getting first blood. And uh, right now, Ari able to go back and pick up double Doran rings against Anivia with just a, a Sapphire Crystal. That is a huge advantage in lane. Yeah, it really, really is. Now, panning out to the top lane, we see here that Wukong's actually having a lot of trouble with against Wings of Death's Vladimir up here. Vladimir did have a chance to push the lane all the way to the tower and then go back. It looks like he's going to be doing the same exact thing. He picked up boots in addition to a couple more health potions. Meanwhile, Wukong really hasn't been able to do much else besides, you know, he's got one health potion left to his name and his boots. He is getting a little bit of farm against the tower, but Wings of Death is just even has a CS lead ahead of him, just doing a really great job of controlling Wukong in the early game. And as we we're talking about in Champion Select, that's when we thought Wukong was going to dominate Vladimir. He, he has to win that matchup early because he's not going to win it later on. He's going to just be out-sustained by Vladimir, but they have sent Maekai up the top. Josh is up there right now, so we'll see if that's going to be able... They're, they're sending him up there to try to help him out, but Unstoppable is right there as well, so we may have a 2v2 fight up here in top lane any second now. Very interestingly enough, Vladimir went back for a Doran shield. He is going to face check this bush into what it happens to be two of them there, but Unstoppable is also there. Looks like Wings of Death is getting very low, has to pop the pool to get out of there. Kikumi, please, a little bit below half health right now. Just kind of ignoring Unstoppable, really want to get that kill on Wings of Death, but now Unstoppable is going to have to burn his own flash as they change focus. Judge line will mean he gets out of there A-OK, -okay, so it's actually a pretty good gank here. Mid lane is going to follow up though, Salty now chasing down Naya, and popping that ultimate. Naya is not level 6, that egg is down, so Salty in a really good spot, actually going to be going in on Josh too. Twisted Advance will actually save Naya, but now Josh is in a bad spot. Salty pops the flash to chase after Anivia. Josh is going to fall as unstoppable. Edwing to death come up from around the corner and behind. Now it looks like Salty is going to probably pick up this kill here on Naya. Naya trying to deal a lot of damage. Egg form does come back up, but it's not going to be enough. Naya is actually going to fall again as the three members of TSF Evo just a little bit stronger than the in coordination of the three members of AL right there as they take a quick 3-0 lead in this first game here, Sala. That whole fight was set up really well by Absolute Legends. They almost managed to get a kill on Wings of Death and on Unstoppable. They got both of them very low. The idea there was really good. They managed to get both of them low. They blew both flashes on both of those champions. So again, the, the whole fight, the whole setup was great, but the reason why they ended up losing that was it really due to the previous fight in mid. It's because Naya's and Nivea was a full level behind Salsi's Ari so that when that fight sort of continued and the two of them got into it, that one level just made a gigantic difference because, of course, Salsi had his ultimate and Naya did not. So that was the difference. Go ahead. Yeah, so we do see in the bot lane here, we had a little bit of a skirmish between Graze and Ezreal. Both of them getting extremely, extremely low, but Graze, once again, only a couple health potions to his name, whereas Aphromoo is actually pretty fresh on his own still, in addition to those uh, Soraka heals. So they are going to come out a little bit on top of that fight. Aphromoo actually two Doran's blades to his name, whereas Graze actually recalling and picking up his second one now. So Aphromoo just being a little bit stronger than Graze in the bottom lane, has about 14 or 15 more farm than Graze too, in addition to that really that really good heal and addition and armor buff on Soraka's Astral Blessing. So a very, very uh, close matchup on bottom lane, but Alpha is just kind of squeaking by because of that Soraka support like you talked about. That's right. We did also see Anivia was able to get her blue in mid. It was it was sort of contested by TSM Evo. T uh, Unstoppable was in the area. He was trying to make a play on it, but he wasn't willing to go in 1v2. So Naya was able to get that, which is really good news for Absolute Legends. If Anivia had her blue buff denied as well, she would really be in trouble. She's already 15 minion kills behind in mid. If you look at the global go the gold total there, Anivia is on 1,700, whereas... Uh, what is it? Whereas Ari's on 2,500, so that is an 800 gold difference, which is very large right now uh, at this early stage in the game. That's a really big difference. That's about two Doran's rings of difference right there between the two. And we do have Josh, uh, the jungle mech guy, is trying to set up for gank in bottom, but there's a ward right there, so he is spotted. So this probably is not going to be successful. But we'll keep an eye on it just in case. Yeah, Josh is going to kind of kind of run for a bush gank here. JPAC is in the other bush, but TSM Evo knows exactly what is up. Aphromoo and Nat and Wing going to be content to falling all the way back to the tower to be okay. Meanwhile, in top lane, we see the Unstoppable sneaking around in the bushes up there. These ones are not warded, though. So Kiko Me Please has no idea what's going on. We'll see. He's actually not going to be patient enough to just uh, 
sit in that bush and try to wait for the gank though. He is going to walk right away. Meanwhile, in middle lane, we have Salsi just kind of contesting Anivia, pushing her back, even stealing the enemy's rates over here, just because she has that innate sustain, has a blue buff of her own, and has that early advantage that you were talking about a little bit before. So she is going to be able to boss them around in the mid lane a little bit. Josh is still waiting down here. Patience as a virtue as ever. <laughs> he's seeing if he can actually... And, and while, he, while he's doing that, Unstoppable is stealing his red buff up in the jungle up top, so you can, just no fear from TSM Evo whatsoever. They know they're ahead in mid and they're ahead in top, so they're able to go and invade in, with impunity. And meanwhile, Josh is just really wasting, just fiddling, twist, twiddling his thumbs down there in bottom lane, not accomplishing anything. Uh, and you can see how they're using the, the fact that they know that he's down there to just go in and counter jungle. Anyway, I really like how Wings of Death has been building Vlad in top lane. That Doran shield is a great pickup. It gives him the health regen, and it also gives him extra armor. He's sitting on 87 armor. Uh, Kikomi, please, just can't really do anything with him. And again, we talked about this in Champions. So, like, Vlad is just stacking armor and then out-sustaining him, and he's just easily winning top in that matchup for that very reason. So unless there's some kind of a gank in top lane, Wukong is really going to be in trouble because Vlad is only getting that much stronger. He just picked up his Hextech Revolver, and it's just a bad, innate matchup between the two champions. So it, it really was a little bit strange that with the last pick, that Absolute Legends went for that. So again, they're going to need to try to do something with Maekai or with Anivia to try to flip that matchup, or it's just going to continue snowballing in favor of TSM EVO. Yeah, EVO does really have that top matchup kind of down on lock. As you mentioned earlier in the champion select, if Vladimir just happens to just spiral out of control from the early game, he is a champion that's going to be super, super dangerous in the later stages of the game. Mid lane, we see a little bit of action. As Salsi getting dangerously close to Naya's tower is going to take a tower shot and a little ultimate frostbite combo from Anivia, but just being able to sustain herself back up with her own passes. Salsi doesn't really look like he's taking all too much damage from this constant harassment on Anivia. No, and again, like we mentioned before, uh, Salsi has that innate sustain on Ari, another champion with sort of an innate ability to steal life. So he, it doesn't really matter if he takes a little bit of harassment from Anivia. As long as he has that blue buff, he's going to be fine. Meanwhile, on down lane, Aphromu is just doing exactly what he wants to do. He's just poking, poking, poking away with those mystic shots and essence fluxes. And uh, normally that'll run you out of mana really quick, but of course he has Soraka for that sustain with Nat Nguyen just infusing him over and over again. And that amount of poke has actually forced the bottom lane of Absolute Legends back to base. And the, the they did not want to bait back there. They did not want to go to base, but they had no choice. They were forced out of it by TSM Evo. They're going to miss about 10 or so minions at the tower. So that is a lot of farm that's getting denied, and you can see that reflected in the creep score down there. 99 for Aphromoo and only 66 for Sneaky Caster. So they're really building up that advantage in bottom lane, too. Yeah, that is very true. And of course, Ezreal going with that Essence Flux build, a really, really great harassment tool. So he is just kind of poking and prodding at Graves because they know that Tarek and Graves want to be aggressive on the bottom lane, even though Ezreal has a lot of escapes. So he's building that Essence Flux build just to really harass back and deal a lot of damage. Essence Flux is not going to be hindered like Mystic Shot, where it does not hit minions. So it's going to constantly go through and attack the champions that it wants to target. So by just poking and prodding, they're going to have to go in there and do some sort of harassment back to really make up for it. Soraka is going to heal him back up, give him that armor buff, and it's really not going to be a good trade for ALNA. Unstoppable does have the Oracle. He picked it up a minute or two ago. He is going around clearing wards, and it looks like Evo wants to first contest this blue. If you notice, they have four champions around the blue of Absolute Legends, and they actually do have an engage there. JPAC's going to flash over the wall, but Saucy's going to chase him. He does hit the charm. The exhaust comes out, but that is going to be a kill right there. And now they're advancing on to Sneaky Castro. Out comes the flash. Naya is getting engaged upon as well. Gets frozen in place by the passive of Nautilus. There's the knockup right there. He is an egg form, going to fall down. And that should be a free blue buff and possibly a dragon as well for TSM Evo. Mm -hmm. That is a clean two for nothing right there. Actually, going back in there, Josh with the twist advance on the Avru, but he essence flux. I'm um, sorry, he arcane shifted out of there, and that is actually going to be very, very bad. As Graze then goes into his death, another kill picked up for Unstoppable's Nautilus, currently at a four zero and two. As you said before, this is going to be a free blue buff with now two additional members of uh, AL down. That is going to be a possible free dragon right here, and there are no ward coverages either. Even though AL can probably guess this is going on, they have no way to stop it right now. And TSM Evo dominating this game right now. Really a, a disastrous fight for Absolute Legends right there. They were losing in each lane. They were losing top, losing mid, losing bottom lane. And right there you see uh, TSM Evo basically cashing in their advantage in that fight, allowing them to get that much further ahead. So right now, Absolute Legends needs to make a really big play somewhere on the map because if things continue going on at the current rate, they're going to just get snowballed out of this game. Like I said, they're behind in the lanes. They're down 6,000 global gold, which is a lot 
for this early in the game, and they're really struggling to win the 1v1 matchups. If you just look at the farm, three people over 100 minion kills for TSM EVO, no one over 100, and Nivea actually tops it with 81 for Absolute Legends. That is a very significant difference, and uh, they're really in a lot of trouble right here. It's not over in the match, but... They are in a lot of trouble. Yeah, they are going to have to play from a somewhat behind position right now, and that is not necessarily what they want to do, especially considering the team composition from TSM EVO. They have that Ari, who, as she's going to be getting fed, is going to spiral out of control. Vladimir is naturally just a later game champion with this Hemo Plague that we talked about a while ago. Any more kills and farm going to Ezreal, of course, is not going to be good because he is an AD carry, and everybody knows that once an AD carry gets a lot of items, they just start hitting like a truck no matter what is going to happen. And then Nautilus out of the jungle with his rampant CC. He hasn't even been contested for this Oracle's Elixir he picked up earlier. That's just going to be a very, very bad spot for AL to try to come back into this one from. What they really need to do is they need to get their bottom lane farmed up. Anivia needs to really work on her item build and just not not be getting harassed out, but they really can't do anything right now because Maokai is just so much farther behind in the jungle than Nautilus that he's not able to really come into lanes and really turn things around with ganks or even support his uh, champions. They keep getting forced out of lane because a lot of the champions on TSM EVO have better sustain or they're just further ahead. Again, they really have very strong sustain between Ari, Vladimir, and Soraka in that bottom lane. Uh, the fact that Anivia lost her blue buff is also very, very significant. It's a really big deal. We do actually have a gank coming out here in top, though. Yeah, Vladimir is going to take down the tower. He is going to see if they can pick up a kill here. I don't think his pool has been burned yet. He uses the heal and the pool there. Wukong's actually getting extremely low. Wings of Death might try to go in here for a kill. He's going to have to actually run away. Josh is just covering his tail at this point. Only has 75 mana. That's enough for maybe one more spell. Wings of Death He's actually going to force two of them back right now. So a level 11 Vladimir forcing away your jungler and your solo top while taking down a tower. I think that's kind of a, a testament to as why TSM Evo is ahead in this game right now. Yeah, TSM Evo really putting on a clinic here. It, it, again, just showing how far ahead Wings of Death is. That's a straight 1v2, and he's able to not only not die, but he's able to force the 2 to run away from the 1, which is really troublesome. Meanwhile, in bottom lane, Aphromoo and Nat Nguyen are already at the second level tower in bottom lane, and they are just not afraid one bit right now. They're continuing to push this, and they are just farming under the second tower now. Uh, without any real fear that they're going to be ganked, although Josh is coming in, it looks like they are going to back out of this. We'll see if they're able to avoid it. But again, just pressure everywhere on the map right now. Pressure in top lane, pressure in mid, pressure in bottom lane. Not making it easy for anyone on Absolute Legends to farm right now. And again, once you start losing that map control, it becomes very difficult to challenge for Dragons, challenge for Baron, or even uh, there's no ability of Absolute Legends to farm in TSM EVO's jungle. Meanwhile, every all the neutral camps in uh, Absolute Legends jungle are constantly being contested, and they're under threat at all points in time, so we see them losing a lot of that farm. And again, uh, it's all the way, it's up now to an 8,000 gold lead, so it's snowballed a little bit further ahead, and it's only going to get that much worse as these towers continue to go down and give more global gold over the side of TSM Evo. Mm -hmm. This mid lane still has a tower up, albeit at very, very low HP, so this could potentially be the next target that TSM Evo is going to try to knock down. Ezreal of that bottom lane, we saw him using the ultimate just to push creeps and farm himself up a little more. I think it's just a testament to how much he doesn't really fear the bottom lane combination of Graze and Tarek at this point. Instead of using that to really deal damage to them, he's just going to farm creeps off of that one. And as a testament to how much farm he's actually gotten, going back and picking up his Infinity Edge doesn't even go for Boots 2 at this point. Meanwhile, Graze picked up his Berserker's Greed, which is the one item that he has that Ezreal does not, in addition to Double Dorans and Vampire Acceptor. See, he is just not nearly as farmed up enough as a Ezreal. We mentioned before the creep score, 149 to 109. So Ezreal just completely dominating the bottom lane matchup right there. Ezreal's extremely far ahead. He's 1,500 gold ahead. And Ooh, now we do, do have a big fight yeah. coming in here. Yes, Salty go ahead. Salty going in onto J-Pack. J-Pack got charmed and everything. A combo will go down and Salty picks up that kill. Not afraid of Maokai and Anivia just kind of running away. Deathfire's Grass actually goes off here. Dealing a lot of damage. Naya's actually going to get egg. Josh is below half HP. Between Salty and Soraka, they're actually doing a decent amount of damage. That is the first time we've seen an Aphrom ultimate go onto a champion, taking down Anivia from all the way across the map. Very, very nice snipe there as they get the tower. They get two members of Absolute Legends. Now they are ahead by almost 10k gold. Eight kills to zero. Three towers, possibly a fourth as this middle one is going down right now. And AL is completely on the back foot. They're going to have to pull a miracle out of this one to really start turning back. They're in a very, very weak position right now. You you don't want to fall behind against any team, but it's it's really bad news when you start falling behind Ari because of her mobility. She's very difficult to catch and kill, 
And once you start stacking up the ability to burst people down like that, we saw the Deathfire Grasp used right there by Salsi. Then it just gets that much more painful. We do have a bit of a fight coming out here. Kikomi Please is getting trapped. He's going to get hit by Hema Plague Ultimate. J Pack has gotten caught in front of the team right there, not really where he wants to be. Meanwhile, Mankai going to use his initiation right there. We do have a number of kills coming out. We do see the first kill of the match for Absolute Legends, but not sure that it's going to be worth it. That is a four for one with only Unstoppable following. And that looks like it is probably going to be the inhibitor in middle lane. Yeah, even though they took out the Oracle's Elixir, they sacrificed four other members of their team because of it. Now Kiko may please be the only one up. Everyone on TSM is fairly low except for Ari. So you might be able to save this inhibitor here. Ari is just going to go in there with a Deathfire Grass full combo, trying to pick up a kill on Wings of Death. Not the target you want to go for as he just pulls away. Saucy pops the last uh, skill on his ultimate. And Ezreal giving everybody that increased attack speed from his Essence Fluff. They will take down this inhibitor. TSM EVO is just going to fall back after this one. They are in an extreme, extreme lead right now. So they're probably just going to go back, pick up some items, clear out the jungle of all the buffs, possibly see them taking either a dragon or a baron. Either one of those areas is probably going to be the next big, big team fight. But I don't know if AL is going to have the manpower they really need to contest TSM EVO in these places. Uh, they'll probably try. I'm not sure that they're going to be able to succeed. Uh, they're probably actually more. TSM Evo is probably more interested actually in taking the blue away from Absolute Legends than getting the dragon here. It actually, at this point in time, another thousand gold, not that big a deal. But getting that blue away from Anivia, taking that away from Naya, is actually extremely important because if Anivia has blue, Anivia can stall out their pushes. If Anivia doesn't have that, then she's going to run out of mana very quickly. She won't be able to run her Glacial Storm. So this game really has just gotten snowballed out of control in favor of TSM Evo. It'll be very difficult for Absolute Legends to come back from this. You can just see how far everyone is ahead on the part of TSM Evo. Again, Infinity Edge Zeal for Ezreal against a BF Sword on the part of Graves. Uh, in terms of mid, Deathfire Grass, Abyssal Scepter against a Rod of Ages. That's an, another full item complete there. In top lane, Vladimir has Will of the Ancients. He has a, a ton of armor between the Doran Shield, his runes, and that Chain Vest. And then he's also got a needlessly large rod up against uh, up against just a Brutalizer and a couple of Doran's Blades on Kiko Mi Please's Wukong up there on top. So really, just really far ahead in every lane. They can force the action wherever they want. I would expect the TSM EVO with their Oracle. They have re-picked re up the Oracle on Unstoppable. I would expect that they would just shove the lanes out and then force a Baron fight. Well, very interesting. Here we see Salsi just going into a 3 versus 1 and taking down Graze right there. So between Anivia, Tarek, and Graze, uh, Ari just came out on top of him right there. This is a testament to how beefy Salty is right now. 6-0-6. Six, six. Deathfire's Grass, Abyssal Scepter, Sorcerer's Shoes, Double Doran's Ring. I think that is an Ari that is very, very, very scary to Absolute Legends right now. And I don't really know if they have anything to really deal with it. Because the Anivia counterpart in the middle lane is just not living up to what they expected to be. We saw Graze fall down extremely quick without dealing too, too much damage back. As you mentioned, the item build on Graze. Very, very, very subpar compared to the item build on Aphromoo right now. So... Just not where they want to be right now. TSM Evo with one member of AL down is going to try to push into this tower. And the gauge comes out. Anivia takes a ton of damage. Nautilus is taking power shots, so he is going to have to flash away. Immediately goes back with the depth charge out. Will knock up Maokai. That lets Aphromoo finish him off for another kill. Hikomi please goes in there with the ultimate. He's not really able to disrupt or deal any damage. Anivia getting egged and instantly killed right there. Uh, Natna wins. Soraka actually going to pick up that kill. And that is currently three members of AL down for none on TSM Evo. It, you, you know that you're having a rough game when uh, Soraka is going in and getting a kill. And it's 17 to 1 with Soraka having as many kills as your whole team. Uh, that's just not the place that AL wants to be. Unfortunately, Graves will fall. They are taking down the inhibitor, taking down Nexus turrets. And this could possibly be game number one for TSM Evo. And AL, they're actually putting out the forfeit vote now. So they're going to just recollect themselves and see what they can do as we're about to go into game two for both these teams. No, that one was that one was simply over. TSM Evo just won all of the solo lanes, and they just uh, put their foot on the pedal and just snowballed it from there. That was a clear dominant victory on their part. Very impressively played. Mm -hmm. That was very, very nice, uh, very, very nice clinic, as I think you called it a little bit earlier from TSM Evo, as they just basically won every single lane, even the matchups that we thought they weren't going to be dominant in, they really, really had a dominant presence over them, especially in the top lane. Vladimir, 1-0 and 7 to uh, Kikomi, please, on Wukong at 0-2 and 0. You already talked about how far ahead the item build was. Vladimir, 9k gold over the 4.9k from uh, Wukong in the top lane. So I think just by looking at the top lane and that being what we 
thought was the favorable matchup in the early stages of the game. I think that's a real testament to how hard uh, TSM Evo ran train on uh, ALMA. Well, well it, Kikomi please did only die twice, so he, mm -hmm. I guess he did do better than elsewhere on the map. But that one, that I mean, it, it wasn't any one person on TSM Evo. It was all their lanes. Salsi 7-0, Aphromu 5-0. Unstoppable played really well as Jungle Nautilus as well. So that that's just a, cl a clear team effort all the way around. And uh, we'll have to see what Absolute Legends decide to do in terms of banning because they probably don't want to see some of those champions again. No, I would not blame it at all. But we're going to see what they're going to do in game number two. We'll get that underway in just a little bit, guys. So stay tuned as we get up to TSM Evo and Absolute Legends and a game number two in this IPL5 League of Legends qualifying match. Stay tuned, guys.